know, Silicon Valley has these boom and bust cycles, and but now everyone's coming back. And it turns out that this area in Hayes Valley, which is just sort of in the center of the San Francisco area, is being a magnet for all this AI activity. It feels like people are talking again, they're meeting again, they're having parties again. It's happening in person. And that really changes things for people in terms of how fast they think, how they learn about KPIs, and that sort of old magic that we had before seems to be coming back. We have about 100 people out here today, after hours, after work hours, meeting up uh, at Salesforce Park here, talking about the ChatGPT4 usage, that's not accessible through the ChatGPT Plus subscription and some implications with the research. It's a San Francisco party. New tech just drops and we, uh, we go for it. Right now in the last six months while we've been watching this is the founders have jumped on this new powerful engine. It's like someone gave them an internal combustion engine and they thought, now what can I do with this? And they've thought of cars, they've thought of buses, they've thought of trucks, but everybody's thought of cars and buses. Everyone's come up with the same ideas looking at these LLMs. Every month we get these things together because we want you guys to become friends. And you're all here in the middle of it. So it's your time to focus on your business ideas and to move as fast as you can and not to let up. People ask me, how big is this? And the, the context I like to look at it in is that between 94 and 2020, we went through what we're calling the connecting, where we got the world connected up on the internet, mobile phones, all these devices everywhere. And so now we've got 4 billion people connected and eventually it'll be everybody on the planet. But that main you know, 20 year, 25 year period was when we connected the world and we were here for that. And now we're entering the phase, what we're thinking of is the transition where we're gonna be adding sort of silicon based life to this planet. So we're carbon based life and this stuff is gonna be thinking in, I don't know, 80 years, 100 years, but this is the beginning of that phase where we actually see software and silicon starting to do a lot of the cognitive work that humans have done in the past. And that's now beginning, we can see it. We've been talking about it for 80 years, but we can now see it. And this is, this is when it just started. So it's, it's a big deal, we're here for it. Uh, and now it's up to us to be the first people who start to get to build things with it. Envision a world where people could just build shit and not have to worry about anything else. Um, and hackathons give that to you for a weekend and it's like, it's so good, but it's just a weekend and then it's over. And so I was constantly trying to find like the next hackathon, the next hackathon, the next, and there weren't that many back then. I started going to hackathons in like 2011. The vision that whole time was like this world where you can just build and not have to worry about anything else. And that was the birth of HF0. So the idea is that we create something where people never actually have to leave or think about anything else. But when people are in this container and it's like they're surrounded by other people who are pushing the limits of how fast you can move and what's possible um, to build, like we just see founders move at, at a pace that I've never seen before. There are two, or there are three floors here across the basement. We have, so we have like 16 of our founders here, and then we also have three guest rooms. We call them visiting hackers. Um, so they come for three nights. They're typically also founders building in um, in the AI space or anything else. But the setup is like a bunch of trailing ones and a bunch of uh, hello. But yeah, now now I don't know what to talk about. Um, we. we we both have a, a background in productizing cutting edge uh, papers and tech. So if you, if you ask us this question in a month or so, uh, we might give you a slightly different answer. But uh, right now, Drip is a, a pipeline that allows you to generate stylized videos um, uh, just from your phone. Um, so, uh, you know, with a few taps and uh, a prompt input, you can, um, you know, make yourself a pirate or recast your room as, uh, you know, an outer space, uh, things like that. You can see the majority of the innovation happening on the image space are actually happening all over the place. Uh, sure, Google might publish a paper, OpenAI might have a model, but everyone else can do that too. There are stuff coming out of Berkeley, Stanford, all the time. You know, I thought that a lot of things were going to take years. Like, I thought multimodal input that GPT-4 just showed off would maybe be another year out. But, uh, so, I maybe maybe I just shouldn't make these predictions. <laughs> all right, and now I think I'm recording. 
there are people that worry that it's gonna take their jobs. I don't think it's gonna take people's jobs for a long, long time. I don't know how many decades, but all it's gonna do right now is augment our jobs. There's just gonna be more and better of everything, more and better art, more and better text, um, more and better analysis. And it's just gonna accelerate the pace of everything. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a companion to us in our scientific research in, in 10 or 15 or 20 years. It's gonna allow science to move forward faster, to have scientists to do more uh, and expand into more areas. So I would just drop everything and focus on what you can do newly with generative AI. We are, we've created our hack week and everyone in our company is tasked with bringing AI into their job. And you should do that with your company and whatever company you've got going or you're thinking of building, have that mindset because now is the time. You only get this every 14 years. Take advantage of it. Hey, how are you doing? I'm the 1987 book from Apple, but they say when you're doing an interface, you should make it such that it's like people can play with it. Like it's a playful interface because the way users learn how to use your product is the same way we all learn to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait. Maybe I can do it from here. Um, the thing that we do love is like Juan. We are heavy users of this amazing technology. It helps us um, be way more productive, especially at 3 a.m. I think that one of the main things that are going to change with generative AI is the way how we interact with technology. And the interactions are going to become way deeper. And they are going to resemble more how we interact with a human than how we interact with an object. In our case, since we are interested in creativity and we are building a creative tool, a good analogy to, to look at is in 87, Photoshop started to appear too. And at that moment, we created like a certain interface to paint with pixels. We have like some sort of digital paper. How do we paint here? What is it gonna be the interface? That UX didn't change in 30 or 40 years. If you look at the evolution of Photoshop, it's kind of the same thing. So we kind of found the UX for painting with a digital brush. So that is kind of our vision to find the right UX for creative people to interact with AI effectively. This is the, uh, the first product that we were talking about before. Uh, it's a prompt search engine. All of these images that you see here have been generated with AI. But as we got into HF0, we started to realize that was not the way to, to create a startup. Because for a startup, you need to have a user, you need to have a customer, you need to think about the problem that you're solving and someone needs to pay you. So what we found out is that, that this thing that we had, it was like extremely powerful, but just for like extremely small group of people that were super interested in this technology. That's how the first product came. The new thing is uh, the Crea Canvas which is the product that we've been working on for the past four months. It's a collaborative whiteboard that is focused on using um, artificial intelligence for prototyping visual ideas. I'm working with both like Erwan and Diego. Are you stealing my phones? And maybe. <laughs> All of these are different artificial intelligence models. Each one is focus on a, on a specific style. It, it makes it really easy to create mood boards yeah, with, with the images that you generate. ChatGPT was not like any crazy breakthrough. It was just like a chatbot, something that everybody knows how to use. You use WhatsApp, you use Telegram. Instead of talking with another human, you're talking with an AI. Even my mom can access the state of the art of artificial intelligence in 2023 really shows how, how important it is to make these tools accessible because they can do amazing things, but people need to have tools to, to use them. Uh, I think it was like canvas, get active object, and then for each object, clone it. And then I can do like object that clone this thing, grab the clone, and then it's like, okay, what do you want to do with the clone? Uh, there you go. <laughs> I now spend my time thinking instead of typing.
Yeah, so right now we are launching this uh, the new product uh, with Generative AI to help brands create like marketing images uh, with just simple descriptions and simple scene builders. Me and my co-founder, we are both from Ukraine. Uh, the team is distributed. After the COVID hit, we started hiring remotely. Because before that, we had all the team in Kiev. Everybody got distributed. I moved here, so that is very exciting. Uh, right now, with the new Generative AI, a lot of the output and the quality of generated image actually lies on the user, on the quality of what they write there. And so we were we were testing a lot of hypotheses on how we can explain to user what to do, how we can give this perfect instruction, how we can help brands tell their stories better with AI. AI is the new electricity because it power it will power everything, business processes, data. It requires some effort to keep up with the space, which is challenging but also focus on your users and not get distracted by the noise. What eventually what matters is if you build the product that people want or not. And uh, that requires some concentration and calm mind and just focus on, on your customer. It's a little bit of a challenge to move to a new country, but uh, San Francisco is very welcoming to people from different backgrounds. So I don't feel, I feel very included here. It takes some time to build a network for sure. It was a little bit of a challenge, but right now we have like 10 events per week. Everybody's excited and everybody's very open. What if you decided that you have 400,000 data analysts in a warehouse, air conditioned warehouse, ready to do work for you right now? How would things change? How would that be different? What would be possible? This will be the, the greatest technology humanity has yet developed. The world is new again for the first time in 14 years, and, and there's so much opportunity. So you have to be able to throw out what was old, and you have to be able to think big, and you have to realize that there's going to be different mental patterns and, and, and feel comfortable with those different mental patterns. And that's where you're going to get your visionary founders. It has come out of decades of research into the algorithms to manage data, but now we've just reached a point where the processing storage and the processing speed and all that has allowed us to put these large language models together to do things that are really amazing in the same way that the smartphone was amazing, in the same way that the internet itself was amazing. And it's just gonna to touch every industry.